Hey everyone, how's it going? This is one I've been asked to do for years now. I'm aware there's another Ditto Red and Blue video out there that is one of the oldest solo runs. I actually still haven't watched that video yet. But since it is now my goal to do a run with all 151 Pokemon, we had to do Ditto at some point, and I really, really wasn't looking forward to this. For those of you unaware, Ditto is a very special Pokemon. It only knows one move, Transform. What Transform does is really strange, but before we talk about it, let's look at Ditto's stats. They're awful. Great, now let's talk about how Transform changes those stats, because that is what it does. So, as the move suggests, Ditto transforms into whatever Pokemon it uses Transform against. When Ditto transforms, it copies all the stats of the Pokemon it's transforming into with one major exception, its HP. So when I was resetting for a good Ditto, I made sure I had good HP and actually made sure I had good attack as well for a reason we'll talk about very shortly. Ditto, however, doesn't transform into a perfect copy. While it has all its stats and moves, it only has 5 power points in each move. In the early game, this isn't really a huge issue since most trainers only have one or two Pokemon. In the late game, this could be a bit of a problem. But I did sort of mislead you earlier when I said Ditto only has one move. Technically, it has another one, Struggle. We've used Struggle in quite a few of our challenges. In this game, it's very useful on Ditto because it is a normal move that deals 50 base power of damage so it gets the same type attack bonus. However, in Generation 1, it's not quite as good as it would be in Generations 2 and 3, because as you may notice, I'm taking back a ton of recoil damage. In Generation 1, half the damage you deal gets dealt back to you as recoil damage. As far as I'm aware, those are our only two options. Transform into the lead Pokemon and use that to sweep through the team, or use Struggle. There's no Delapa strategy, there's no level up glitch that I'm aware of, it's just Transform or not Transform. So what are we gonna do versus Brock? But before we do, if you're like me and looking for something else other than Pokemon to play during the holiday season, then might I recommend Persona 5 Tactica, the sponsors of this video. Set in the Persona 5 universe, Persona 5 Tactica is a turn-based strategy game where, like in Pokemon, getting to know the different characters and their different abilities is integral, but as it's a strategy game, you also need to memorize the terrain and know which attacks you can use and when attacks will be ineffective like when an enemy is behind cover. If you've played Persona 5, this game stars the Phantom Thieves and features tons of recognizable elements both from the Persona series and the Megami Tensei franchise in general, which by the way is one of my all-time favorites, highly recommend. I can't possibly give you a full breakdown of this game in just a minute, but if you want to check this game out for yourself, it is available on every major console, Xbox One, Series S, Series X, PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC. If you're looking for an exciting strategy-based RPG, look no further than Persona 5 Tactica. Big thanks to Atlas for sponsoring the video, and I can't wait to give this game an extremely thorough playthrough, but first, we need to get back to the run at hand. It's easier to try transforming first because when you get to the Pokemon Center, it restores all your power points. I decide to use all five defense curls and then go for tackle. It's not going super duper well for me, and we're going to end up needing to use struggle anyway, but at least here, we're a Geodude as opposed to a Ditto, and that means the opposing Geodude's tackle is doing a lot less damage. Now, this is very long, very tedious, and very boring. We also don't get many critical hits because critical hits are based on your base speed, and Geodude's base speed is terrible. After what feels like an eternity, we lose because recoil damage always must be greater than one, and since we're only dealing one damage to Geodude, we're actually hurting ourselves as much as we're hurting it, and we end up fainting first. We haven't even made it to Onyx yet, but we're only at level 12. We've had to level up far, far more, so this isn't totally unprecedented. I battled that junior trainer in Brock's gym and the rival over and over again, losing, obviously, and with that I was able to gain a lot of experience and get to level 16. 
Now you can see what the struggle strategy would look like, and it's not going so great, just because Geodude does a lot more damage to me, and we don't really make more of a dent than the last time. However, if we get critical hit luck, we can do a lot better, and I do get better critical hit luck here. The reason that's so important is because Geodude likes to use Defense Curl, and that's good since if it's using Defense Curl, it's not attacking me, but of course, then I do way less damage, so you're going to need a couple critical hits. And if you get them, you can make it to Onyx, but it is very hard to defeat the Onyx, since all Onyx needs to do is go for Bide, and once it does that, we're locked into struggle, we have nothing else we can do, and it just knocks us out in one hit. Or it can just go for Tackle and Screech, and that can do it too. So, does not look like Struggle with Ditto, at least at level 16, is a viable strategy. I go back and forth between the Struggle strategy, and, well actually they're both the Struggle strategy, but the Transform and the Non-Transform strategy. And in the end, the closest I get is at level 20, this attempt with the non-transform strategy. Unfortunately, we are literally one HP away. It's a relief to get an attempt like that, but it's also really irritating because it shows that I can win at this level without having to level up anymore, which is nice in that the strategy I'm using will work. It's frustrating because, well, so close yet so far, but thankfully, just five minutes later, I get some really lucky crits, a really good attempt. Don't forget, only base 48 speed. So, not really statistically going to get a ton of crits, but ditto after an hour and 11 minutes, longer than many of my fully evolved Pokemon runs, ditto has finally beaten Brock. Typically, the reason Brock is so difficult is that a lot of Pokemon take a while to learn their more useful moves or need to get them via TM, but of course, with ditto, these problems are just going to keep cropping up again and again and again. And so, I don't know if ever the run is going to get easier. Level 20 isn't even that over-leveled. It's not like we're above Misty's Pokemon. So, I have a feeling we're still in for some really difficult fights. Okay, so Rival 2, I decide to use Transform because Pidgeotto is pretty good. It has Gust, Sand Attack, and Quick Attack. It's also reasonably speedy, so you do get crits every now and again, which is nice. We knock out the first two Pokemon, and so far so good. Unfortunately, Gust isn't a flying attack, and we actually run out of power points. This is the thing we were talking about earlier in the video, that Transform, that is the big limitation, is that with only five power points, you run out. After leveling up a little bit more in Misty's Gym, we end up getting a victory. Nothing really special happens. I just get a little bit better luck with Bulbasaur. It's a 4 KO with Pidgeotto. Abra, I use up all my sand attacks here. This is smart, so if I run out of power points, I'll be able to use Struggle, which is a normal move. We knock out Abra in one hit. I go for Quick Attack against Rattata. It's a 2 KO after Gust. And then Bulbasaur, it uses Leech Seed and then Vine Whip. And thankfully, the ranges work out that we win with 14 HP. So not too difficult to battle. You should know that leveling up, even though the stats are copied, the damage formula does take level into account. So the higher level I am, even if I'm transformed, I will be doing more damage. So somewhat unfortunately, because it takes such a long time, leveling up is still a very important part of the run. But I didn't keep rolling just to talk to you. Watch what happens right here against this bug catcher. It's really strange, and at first I didn't really know what was going on here. I go for tackle, it does a ton of damage, but then the second tackle does like nothing. I mean, I know the first hit was a critical hit, but that was way more than two times the amount of damage. And then again with Weedle, which has similar stats, the critical hit is doing way, way more than it should. This will matter in a huge way going forward. And yes, I believe I discovered another obscure glitch relating to Ditto's Transform. I guess that's mandatory when I do a Ditto video. And I'll describe exactly what's going on, or at least what I think is going on, a little bit later in the video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we're going to make it through this long and tedious section, and eventually we can battle Misty, although I'm not terribly confident we're going to win. I've been using Struggle on most of the random trainers, so I'm going to continue doing that here. Staryu is a 2 KO. We level up. 
We get X Defend, which means it's going to be a 4 KO. We get a really useful crit, but with Starmie outspeeding, this does not look like a battle we're going to win. But I'm going to try one more time because there's really no reason not to. Spoiler alert, I lose that battle and like the next six more. And I decide what makes sense. I probably can use Struggle against Misty, but I should probably wait till I outspeed Starmie. And there's really no reason to rush. This run is going to take a very long time, I assume. So leveling up against random trainers, being super high level, that's just something we're going to need to do. So we'll go ahead and do that and battle Misty a little bit later. One section of the game where there are a lot of trainers to battle is the SSN, and I decide to battle Rival 3 just to see how that's going to go. Notice I'm at level 31. I'm using Struggle, which I didn't versus Rival 2, and you can see that's probably not going to work out because we just don't have enough HP. We didn't even make it to the final Pokemon. So we're likely going to have to use Transform just like we did versus Rival 2. And wouldn't you know, after I heal and get my Transform Power Points back, we now have the same moveset as before, and I make a very, very big mistake. And we'll talk about this in a second. Because I am going to win this battle. I'm going to spoil it. We win the battle. But I actually just broke my game without even knowing it. It's not broken in this battle. This battle, everything is fine. Everything is great. We're going to use Struggle to knock out Ivysaur. I mean, I already told you I won. I wasn't lying. But watch what happens when I get cut and go to battle this trainer. Ditto has cool trainer. What? Can we screenshot that? Cool trainer, zero out of 13. And then my game completely crashed. What in the world just happened? Let me tell you. Apparently, this glitch also happened to Picaspery. So I did not discover this. But thankfully, I did find out why exactly this happens. And I can battle Rival 3 again, which I have to do because my game crashed. So in that last battle, I swapped Quick Attack and Gust Around, something I always just kind of do. I like the move I use most at the top. However, if you do that wall transform, the game gets really confused. There are a couple things that can happen. What can happen is what we saw there, where the game just straight up crashes, However, that's almost preferable to the other option, which I believe happened to Picaspery from what I understand, where you can enter the fight section, you see transform at zero power points, but you can't select anything. And because it's a trainer battle, you can't run away, you're just stuck and have to soft reset. Thanks to modern technology, I actually was able to figure out what's going on here. If you were to load up this ditto in a program like PK Hex, you'll see that Ditto still has power points remaining for a move that doesn't exist in its third slot. And that's why the game either crashes or the game allows you to enter the fight menu but doesn't have a move for you to select. The bottom line is never swap your moves around while transform. Just leave them in whatever order they're in or you're going to have to reset, which is frustrating. Anyway, after beating Rival 3 again, I go to battle Misty, and this time I use Transform Strats. It's this battle where we need to understand what I was talking about a few minutes ago, what we'll call the Ditto Crit Glitch. Now, you'll notice that when I get critical hits, for some reason they're dealing a lot more damage than they should, both against Star U and then against Star Me. Now, because I swap back and forth between Struggle and Transform, I was able to figure out pretty quickly what's going on here. The damage these moves are doing are not based on the stats of the Pokemon I'm transformed into, but they're based on Ditto stats. And because Ditto is at a higher level, those stats are a lot better than the Pokemon I'm transformed. So critical hits in this run, while transformed of course, are super, super, super important to get since our Ditto will almost always be over leveled. It's funny because while this glitch is more random, it is in a way very similar to the Ditto level up glitch we encountered in Pokemon Emerald, where if we leveled up in the middle of a battle, the game started to calculate Ditto stats instead of the Pokemon we are transformed into, and we use that a ton to beat Pokemon Emerald. Unfortunately, that's not a thing, at least in red and blue, but we have the new crit glitch to make up for it. So. Always some bizarre glitch. Transform is such a weird move. 
but we've defeated Misty and we can move on to Lieutenant Surge. I decided to use Untransformed Ditto for Surge as well. There's only three Pokemon and at level 33, the normal type struggle just makes a lot of sense. And this is a unique thing to Generation 1. The fact that Ditto has normal type struggle, oh, we lost. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm going to try battling again, but that didn't look great, to be quite honest with you. So we get Tackle from Voltorb, 62 HP for Pikachu. Quick Attack's not great. We have 36 for Raichu. Growl sucks. That crit really helps. X speed. You know what? I'll take it. We had 3 HP to spare, so realistically, I probably should have done... Well, honestly, we could do a lot of the game and then come back, but a win's a win. That's three badges down. So far, yes, there have been challenges, but everything has been pretty good. That's going to start to change kind of quickly. Giovanni number one wasn't too bad. We transform into Onix in our first attempt, and we have some useful moves. We have Screech to lower Onix's defense, and Giovanni's Onyx is going for Rage, so I can try to go for things like Rock Throw. Rage actually isn't so bad if you think about it, because what Rage does do is it raises my attack. Yes, it's only base 20 power, but it never runs out of power points, and it's just a move I can use. I go for Bind, and then I use Screech again. Then I start going for Rage, and because I am an Onyx, Kangaskhan doesn't do all that much to me, and the victory, while slow, is fairly easy. This was the last easy battle we would have. Rival 4 is typically a joke, but if we use Transform, it wasn't working. Remember, that's the strat we used the first few times, but we're not dealing with pre-evolved Pokemon anymore. We're dealing with Gyarados that does a ton of damage and has Dragon Rage. And in five attempts, I never made it past the Gyarados. I decided to go battle a bunch of trainers and use up all my power points for Transform, and things aren't going great. Half our HP gone just as we get to Gyarados. There's no way we can knock out, we can't even knock out Growlithe and still have HP remaining. Struggle is not looking like a viable strategy. So to recap, Struggle's not looking like a viable strategy. While raising levels is useful, it's not really going to make up for the significant power differential we seem to have. Yeah, looks like we're kind of stuck here. Now I can battle Erica. that wouldn't get us unstuck, because Erica at this point is kind of optional, but we are encountering a new problem, the problem of potions. When a lot of Pokemon get to low health, gym leaders are going to heal them, and we often don't have enough HP to take the recoil damage. So that could end up being a problem, and it also seems like we can't get hit by Rap, but struggles a two-hit KO, which is a problem, it does go for Sleep Powder in attempt number three, and that might be all we need to win. Tangela with the crits a two-hit KO, but I don't have enough HP for Vile Bloom. Turns out, I don't. So, Rival 4 doesn't look possible. I don't think Transform's gonna work well for Victory Bell, but it doesn't even matter, because I've battled almost all the trainers I can. There are still some I can battle, but... It doesn't look like we have an easy pathway to advance to the rest of the game. Well, there were a bunch of trainers I forgot about in and around Rock Tunnel, so I'm at level 45 now, and it made a difference. Poison Powder missed. I actually level up to level 46. Now we don't need a critical hit, and we're at 50 HP for Vile Plume. This is going to be, with Poison Powder, just enough, and I mean just enough. That was a first try victory at this level, and we got really lucky. I'm totally cool with that, we're gonna take it, but now it seems like our only thing to do... I mean, one of the only things we can do is battle Rival 4. You can't get into Sylph Company until you rescue Mr. Fuji. You can't get by the Snorlax until you get the Poke Flute. Rival 4 is what's in store for this run. What a terrible rhyme. Hopefully this battle goes better than that rhyme did. Well, it didn't get off to a good start. I could have 9 more HP, but... Still, even with our increase in level, we're not close. We're at 8 HP for Growlithe. Even if Dragon Rage never hit, there's no way we're going to get through all those five Pokemon. I mean, I can try in vain because I want Struggle to work, 
but realistically, we just don't have enough HP. We're at 47, that was two crits. 18, see there's no way. Mathematically impossible right now to use Struggle unless we level up. Now in any other game, we could use either a Mystery Berry or a Lepa Berry, and that's really useful because typically the first Pokemon is weak, but the second Pokemon's fairly strong, and being able to transform into Gyarados would be sweet, but that's just not an option in original Red and Blue. All I could do is battle Rival 4 again and again and again until we brute force it, and the way you can brute force it is getting crits. And Pidgeotto's base speed is okay. You're gonna get critical hits just under 15% of the time, but we absolutely needed them versus both Pidgeotto and Gyarados. And one of the biggest reasons for this is that without critical hits, we end up running out of power points, and then we have to waste our power points versus Ivysaur, which knows Poison Powder. Trust me, I came so close to knocking out this Ivysaur about 15 different times, but always it would survive on just a little bit of health after I ran out of moves. In this battle, I got absurdly lucky and got four critical hits by my count, but that's what it took to win. We're lucky Pidgeotto has base 71 speed, and so it gets critical hits about 15% of the time, but other Pokemon, we won't be so lucky. This was very, very irritating, and I wish I could tell you it was the end of the difficult section, but no, this was just the beginning. But before we get into that, I did find footage of the other thing that can happen when you swap around your moves. So this is what I was talking about. Transform has zero power points, but I can't use it. I can't use struggle. I can't do anything. I'm just soft locked here. It's really, really, really annoying and fixing it requires, to my knowledge, there's only two or three ways to fix it if you've saved after you, of course, accidentally initiated this glitch. So, yeah, just a very annoying thing that could ruin this run at any time. So, great stuff there. Anyway, why was this run so, so difficult? I mean, Rival 4 seemed really bad, but Koga and Rival 5 -ol were on a whole other level. Remember how I talked about eventually the Pokemon are going to have enough combined HP that we won't be able to just use Struggle? Well, Koga presents a very unique problem. It's very clear we're not going to be able to knock out all the Pokemon unless we got really lucky and we got a 1 in 256 chance that Weezing used self-destruct. So just transform, right? Well, this is the first time where struggle isn't working and transforming doesn't seem very viable. We would copy the stats of a level 37 coughing, but the moves are the bigger problem. Smog and Sludge are resisted by poison Pokemon and Tackle is awful. Smokescreen also, yeah, it lowers accuracy, but then we just have to use Struggle once we ran out of these moves, and we know that with Struggle we don't have enough HP. So it just feels like Koga I have to level up an absurd amount until I have so much HP that I can just use Struggle untransformed. So I guess the only option is to battle Rival Fievel, which doesn't open up that much of the game, by the way. All Rival Fievel would do is open up the second Giovanni battle, which may itself be really difficult. At least if I defeat Koga, I can surf. And yes, there are tons of trainers in Sylph Company, and many in and around Fuchsia City, including those on Cycling Road. So it's not like I don't have options to level up, but at some point, we're gonna need to defeat Koga to open up more of the game. I've battled pretty much every trainer I can up to this point, and time to try Rival Fievel. I get hit with Sand Attack in Battle 1, but already what I'm seeing... I mean, let me just show you why this isn't going to work. I mean, you already probably know, but once we get a better battle, we don't even knock out Gyarados before we run out of HP. Like, we're not going to be able to use Struggle, which is the far better strategy. I mean, Struggle, you have so much more control. You're at a higher level. You don't have to use four terrible moves. It's nice, but there's no way in heck we're going to beat Rival Fievel's five Pokemon with Struggle. We're going to have to transform like we have the other four previous Rival battles. Koga, on the other hand, as we discussed, we can't transform. It just won't work. So I'm hoping we have a better showing, but right now it seems like we have to level up a ton more. We do make it to Weezing, but with 13 HP, that's not going to nearly be enough. I do have some rare candies. I've gotten everyone I possibly can, 
but we're running out of levels unless you want to go run around in the grass and battle wild Pokemon for a few hours, which I might have to do. And that would be, aside from before Brock, a first in this series. I've battled every last trainer that I can, and I'm at level 65, and this just isn't working. Like, we don't have enough HP. We need to be over half HP when we knock out Muck, and we're nowhere close. Even with perfect luck, we'd be at like 40 HP. That's not going to be enough to knock out Weezing. So even though this may cost me time later on, I'm hoping it doesn't, and I'm going to see what this battle looks like if I use all the rare candies I have, all six of them, and level up to level 71. So at level 71, don't forget we do more damage, we take back less damage, we gain HP, maybe it'll work, eh, it doesn't really work. We're below half HP after Muck, and we're just 39 HP is better, it's better, and you know what? We take Weezing to very low HP, but clearly there was no way we could ever knock it out at this level and have enough HP to survive recoil. Now, I'm just curious what would happen if we transformed into coughing, right? I know it won't work, and obviously we just missed a tackle, a precious tackle, so it's not going to work, but what would happen if we used coughing? So we knock out the first coughing fairly easily without any crits. Don't forget, we're not going to get many crits because coughing is really slow. Now, I can use Smokescreen against Muck, which just wastes power points, which is what I really want, because even as coughing, struggle is my best move. So I have gotten rid of pretty much all my power points. Smog is pretty useless. And I would have liked a critical hit here. That would have been nice, but whatever. Muck has also used a bunch of Minimize, so this is really annoying. And it looks like we're going to be in actually a worse situation with 81 HP. So yeah, this strategy, it's not really working either. Hilariously, even though I think there's only one smoke screen, we're missing like every attack. It doesn't really matter. While we do get to wheezing, it uses self-destruct and there was a 1 in 256 chance we won. I know the game says we win here, but that's just because we have other HM Pokemon in our party that don't count anyway. So, yeah. I don't know what to do here. I mean, we can try battling rival Fival again, and if we beat him, that opens up one more trainer. But if we can't win, wild Pokemon it is. So we're gonna use transform strats because of course we need to. And just like last time, we really need critical hits. We get one, well, eventually against Pidgeot. And remember, it's now Pidgeot, not Pidgeotto. So we do have a much higher base speed, which means we get more critical hits. And we actually make pretty decent headway. And if we used up our Whirlwinds earlier before we got to Venusaur, and maybe even still had a Wing Attack remaining, there is actually, maybe we could win right now with all these Sand Attacks, but there is a solid chance now. We don't have enough HP, but there was a solid chance we could have won. Yeah, we're going to take Venusaur. Ah, you know, we actually could have maybe knocked it out, but we would have lost anyway. I think this battle is very winnable. It might take a few attempts, but I'm fairly confident we're going to do this at level 65. Well, I was wrong. After losing for about five minutes, I decide to use the rare candies and get to level 71. And here's what we get. Just like Rival 4, the crit on turn one versus Pidgeot, the crit on turn two versus Gyarados, Against Growlithe, we don't really need a crit. One quick attack, one wing attack knocks it out. Against Alakazam, quick attack doesn't quite knock it out, but we do have a bunch of wing attacks, and this means we really don't need to waste power points. It's going to be a 3-hit KO for wing attack, but even though Razor Leaf is an automatic critical hit, because I'm at such a high level, because I'm a Pidgeot, I'm fine, and we actually are able to win. If I don't sound too excited about that, I mean, I don't know, I had to rely on two roughly 18% critical hits, which I don't love. But more importantly, what did this victory accomplish for us? Usually Giovanni 2 is a total joke, but it's not going to be one here. Think about it, the first Pokemon's a Nidorino. You know what, let me just show you. If you thought Coughing's moves were bad, Nidorino has some pretty awful moves. 
Focus energy would be really useful. We want critical hits, but because of how it's bugged in Generation 1, it quarters our chance of getting a critical hit, making it the worst, and I mean worst possible move we could ever have. And Horn Attack, Fury Attack, they're not great. I mean, can they get through the first two Pokemon? For sure. But then comes out Rhyhorn, and after Rhyhorn, Nidoqueen. We're not going to get through Rhyhorn and Nidoqueen with these, and we're not going to be able to set up or just waste all our power points and use Struggle. I have absolutely no earthly idea how we're going to do this. I mean, at least with Koga, I feel like we're making some progress, but this battle, I, I just cannot even start to guess what I can do or hope for to get a victory without getting to like level 100, which I really hope isn't the case. However, if I were able to defeat Koga because Blaine's Gym and Surf opens up, we'd be able to battle a lot of trainers and get a lot higher of a level, which would make it a lot easier, transformed or not transformed. And as I was talking, you saw that not transforming doesn't really work here either. I mean, it's better, we're able to make it to Nidoqueen, but even if we never got attacked, there's no way we'd have enough HP to knock it out. Sometimes, by the way, because we use in-game time instead of real time, what I'll do is while I'm trying to think of what to do next or alternate strategies, I'll just battle over and over again, just because why not? It's better than just sitting and staring at a blank screen. But do not kid yourselves, I was very aware that there was no chance we could win. And, and I do think it's actually mathematically impossible for me to win not transformed right here. Now, I did battle Giovanni for about half an hour, but as Nidorino, not as Ditto. And I didn't make any progress. However, I did feel against Koga, there was a glimmer of hope. If I could knock out Coughing in one hit or Muck in two hits, that might preserve enough HP and make the luck less and less of a problem. And maybe, just maybe, I could get by wheezing, but I'm not sure. Right now, the only thing to do is battle Koga or wild Pokemon, so I'm going to try a lot. And you can see it's not a range, nor is it going to be the next level, I think, where I knock out Coughing in one hit. However, if you get perfect luck and never get attacked, that means 59 HP for wheezing. Is that enough? Well, I got hit by Smog there, so I know that's not going to work. That's the question I'm asking myself. If we got absolutely perfect luck, never got hit a single time, was it indeed possible? Well, after like 30 battles, which it took to get the perfect luck, we're about to get our answer. We don't get a crit, but X attack is fine. 169 for Muck. Poison Gas misses. 101, which is the most I've ever had. And then Smog misses. 61 HP, that's the most we've ever had. So we use Struggle, X Attack, we're at 35. We use Struggle, and you'll notice I pause here because I can't believe it. I was actually freaking out. Do we have enough HP? It's so hard to tell. And with just five HP remaining, after hours of attempts at various trainers, we have finally made significant concrete progress. We have access to Surf outside of battle. We have defeated Koga. There are the trainers in Blaine's gym. There are all the trainers on the water. We can battle all those before we have to worry about Giovanni number two. Honestly, this was feeling less like one of my typical red and blue challenges and more like one of my quote unquote impossible runs. At this point, I didn't care at all about how fast I was going or looking for consistent strategies. <laughs> Who cares? Just beating the game felt like it would be a Herculean task. We were stuck a long time in this section, but surely the rest of the game will be... <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence. You guys have no idea what's coming up next. I mean, literally what's coming up next is Blaine, and we're going to lose this battle. Now, I always try whatever strategy I'd been using against the trainer. So if I was using Transform, I'll use Transform. Typically, I use Struggle because it's much faster. And it's very clear to me that's just not going to work. And I thought about it right after I lost and realized, hey, why not just use Transform? We can then do something that I never thought I would do in a Ditto run. 
It's been a staple of these runs. We can't escape it. The badge boost glitch. We can transform into Growlithe that knows agility, and we can use three agilities. Unfortunately, we can't use more than that. And then Takedown takes down Growlithe. It takes down Ponyta. I go for Leer because I need to save on power points. It takes out Rapidash. Unfortunately, I level up here, but I still have a bunch of Leers. I use all of them because I need to make sure this knocks out Arcanine. I do have one to spare. It doesn't, but thankfully Arcanine doesn't attack and a move with 15% chance of missing doesn't miss in five consecutive attempts. So not a first try victory technically, but a first try victory while transformed. Pretty awesome. Now we've battled a bunch of trainers, so I should go back and try Giovanni 2 again, because if we can get past Giovanni 2, Sabrina should be extremely easy, and we may be able to beat this before level 100, which is not like required, but would be a super cool like bonus challenge that I'm not going for. If I need to get to level 100, I'm gonna do it, but I would love nothing more than to win at like level 98 or 99, just to say I didn't need to get all the way to level 100. So I'm still hoping for that. Unfortunately, despite all the progress I've made, all the level ups we've done, it really doesn't seem like it's helping all that much. I mean, I'm able to get to Rhyhorn pretty consistently, but getting to Nidoqueen as transformed Nidorino, it hasn't happened much at all. I'm not even sure if it's happened yet. It's hard because I've battled so many times with both strategies, and usually, while not transformed, I make it to Nidoqueen. I don't think I've actually done so as Nidorino. I mean, I have another battle right here where you can see we almost one-shot Kangaskhan, and it's actually looking like it might be really close if we got perfect luck. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, 63 HP, this might be it. No! No! When I said perfect luck, I meant perfect luck. But this is actually kind of uplifting that I see a pathway to beat Giovanni 2. It turns out transform wasn't going to be the answer. If we level up enough, struggle will eventually work. Well, I have four rare candies. Let's just see how it works with four rare candies. We one-shot Nidorino. We don't one-shot Kangaskhan, but Comet Punch misses. Still perfect luck. We... Guard spec is good. Critical hit, great. 74 HP. Struggle. Ooh, that's great. Scratch. Oh! <laughs> I can't believe it! Literally with one HP to spare. I, I don't care that I use the rare candies just to test it out. We're keeping that. Are you kidding me? Finally, I think this battle has taken me four hours to do. Like, in real time. I just don't think you guys understand how much longer this run is than any other run. Other than, like, of course, there's that Magikarp run I did all those years ago. But that was only half the game. I just, this has been honestly a nightmare. And the part that makes it kind of frustrating is that you really only have a choice of two strategies. Do we use struggle? Do we transform? Or do we transform and use struggle? So I guess sometimes there's a hidden third strategy. But a lot of it is just hoping for really good luck. And, and that's not the most fun thing to do. It feels good when you finally get it, but it's not as fulfilling as some of my other videos where I really had to think about things. But who knows? Maybe perhaps there's still some room for strategy later on. In the meantime, we're gonna beat Sabrina really quickly. I mean, I'm assuming that, but I feel pretty safe in that assumption. Struggle knocks out Kadabra. Struggle knocks out Mr. Mime. Yeah, we have more than enough HP. And we're at level 82. Like, we're really overleveled for this battle. And yeah, 51 HP to spare. So this one wasn't difficult. But you want to know what our reward is for beating Sabrina and finally making it to the last gym? The guy that took me four hours to defeat? Well, we have to defeat him again. And this time, his team has five Pokemon instead of four, and two of them are rock Pokemon. Guys, I am not exaggerating. Giovanni 3 might be one of the absolute worst experiences I've ever had playing Pokemon. Allow me to explain 
the absolute misery of this battle. Right now I'm at level 83, so I'm fairly high leveled. The best thing we could possibly do is beat this with just Ditto, like we did against Sabrina. But after knocking out Doug Trio, it's painfully obvious we will not have anywhere close to enough HP. I mean, we didn't even have enough HP to knock out Nido King. It's not like with Koga, where at least we got two Weezing, like we're not even getting two Rhydon, which will resist our attacks. So, okay, okay, just transform, right? Well, we transform into his level 45 Rhyhorn, which is slow, and doesn't have as good attack as our Ditto. We can use Horn Drill, so that's one down, but Doug Trio will always go for Dig, and it does a lot of damage. Stomp doesn't knock it out, despite the fact I'm double its level. Next comes out Nitto Queen, and Horn Drill can't affect it, because in Generation 1, the way one KO moves work is that you need to be able to outspeed, and then it's just a flat 30% chance of hitting. The only reason I used it, however, was because I could see that I was about to run out of power points and would need to rely on struggle. Anyway, let me show you what good luck versus Giovanni looks like and how that's not actually good at all. So anyway, we want to hit Horn Drill as quick as possible. Maybe we'll explain why maybe in a second. There's so much going on here. But right now, I just want to illustrate, you're not going to knock out Doug Trio. We already talked about that, but it can use Guard Spec. So that means it'll only hit you with Dig once. There's about a 50-50 chance of it doing that. Now, like we talked about earlier, we don't want to run out of power points, so using Tail Whip is important. And with that, you can make it to Rhydon. But <laughs> here's the thing about Rhydon. Rhydon has a really cool move, Fissure which it'll always go for because it's classified as a ground move, which is super effective. And yeah, it's 30% and that was pretty unlucky it hit the first turn, but how much damage do you think Fury Attack would do to a Rhydon? Don't worry, I'll show you. The answer is not a lot. And I can't use Horn Drill because it outspeeds me. So what can I realistically do? What can I even do? I mean, a critical hit's not gonna knock it out in one hit. It still resists a normal move, even with Ditto's stats. So, while I show you all these unsuccessful battles, let's talk about what I started to do and the options I saw for myself. We can level up, and that might make things easier, like if we get hit by Tail Whip, the badge boost glitch activates, and we might be able to knock out Doug Trio in a single stomp. That would be pretty good. But the other thing we could do is if we are hit by five Tail Whips between Rhyhorn and Nidoqueen, we actually would outspeed the Rhydon, and thus Fissure wouldn't be able to hit me. But consider this, both Rhyhorn and Nidoqueen have four moves, and it's just a one in four chance they go for Tail Whip. The chance that you get hit by five of them, and then, and then, don't take so much damage from Nitto King or Doug Trio that you faint? I'm gonna tell you, it seems kind of impossible. So, I don't know what to do. Do I use up all my power points so I use struggle so I have something to hit right on with? Do I try to get hit by five tail whips and pray I have one horn drill and hope for a 30% Hail Mary? I didn't know. I honestly didn't know and I just, this was hard. Now, generally speaking in these runs, even if someone's already done them before, I refuse to look up anything. I wanna come up with my own strategies, but I'll fully admit I went to Picasperi's video and wanted to see what exactly he did in this battle. How did he win? Did he use Ditto? Did he transform? And it's very clear he transformed, but the exact line I believe it was, was that he needed perfect luck and everything needed to go right. And my heart sank because what did that mean? I stopped watching at that point, realizing there wasn't going to be some quick strategy I just wasn't thinking of. I would have to spend hours and hours and hours leveling up and doing this battle over and over and over and over again, just to usually lose by the time I get to Doug Trio. And that means, yes, at the end of the game, I went to the Pokemon Mansion and I started battling wild Pokemon. We were going to level up an incredibly high amount. Eventually I was going to run out of potions. Eventually, I'd have to just lose to Giovanni over and over and over again. But for now, we could get as high level as possible 
Just try to make some of those ranges a little better. Just hope that by leveling up, the odds tip ever so slightly in my favor, and I'm going to be able to do this. Well, we've made it all the way to level 92, and I haven't even gotten close yet. The best thing that could happen is getting hit by Tail Whip, because then I can't get hit by Horn Drill. We then want the Guard spec on turn 1, and it's not yet a range. This is unfortunate, but eventually it will be, and we'll knock out Dugtrio in one hit, which could leave us at full HP, which is pretty nice, and probably will be needed. Now, to save power points, I always go for a couple Tail Whips, but I gotta be careful, because eventually Giovanni will go for Guard Spec, and that will prevent status-lowering moves like Tail Whip from working for the rest of the battle. This battle, it's going pretty good. I waste all my power points against Nidoking. It gets a critical hit, which I don't love. But I know I don't have enough power points for Ride On. I'm gonna have to use Struggle at some point, but we get really lucky. Two Fissure Misses, two Tail Whips. And, I mean, you know, this isn't so bad. It's doing some decent damage. Struggle, you know, if we don't get hit, we actually could win. Actually, we're getting really close. But... 30% Fissure enough times is eventually going to hit. This was by far the closest battle I had. And unfortunately, it would be the closest I would get for hours. At this point, I think I've battled Giovanni over 500 times. And I think you know it's about to come. Tail Whip, Horn Drill now outspeeds because of Badge Boost Glitch, which is why I like getting hit by Tail Whip. And we knock it out. There's about a 25% chance he goes for a guard spec here, and we don't unfortunately get the knockout. That's not great. Minus 100 HP. Hit by Poison Sting is fine. Guard spec, it's going to be a 2 hit KO, and I go for Fury Attack, a miss. Not looking great. And then a 2 shot? I mean, how are we going to win this one, right? Well, Tail Whip. I use up all my Horn Drills to get ready for Struggle against Rhydon. I've done this hundreds of times before. Very clutch critical hit there helps, and 69 HP isn't nothing, but it's way less than I've had, and one fissure knocks me out anyway. Well, I go for Tail Whip number one, anticipating guard spec, and you know, the stomp does decent damage, but it's after I get this crit. Don't forget, Rhydon's base speed is very tiny. I think it's like a 5% chance, and all of a sudden, this one inexplicably lucky crit has taken this battle from nothing to like, please, please clutch this out. I use my other tail whips, no guard spec. Struggle is doing decent damage. We're getting the misses with Fissure. And thanks to tail whip, thanks to no guard spec, thanks to all the luck, but not perfect luck because Doug Trio didn't cooperate. We win and I save instantly. Instant save right there. 30 hours of in-game time to get to this point. And you'll notice I'm just standing there because I actually jumped up and down. I went out of my chair. This was 2.30 in the morning. I was fully ready to start up a stream tomorrow and just do Giovanni attempts all day. But just before bed, and admittedly a lot later than I wanted to stay up, I was able to get past this. And my reward was typically the hardest six battles in the entire game. However, however... Rival 6 Pidgeot has agility, meaning badge boost glitches in play, which is good. The Elite 4 seem like they're going to be awful, specifically Laurelie, but I can't allow myself to be deflated here. I just overcame one of the most difficult battles in this entire series. Please, let this next part be a lot easier than we all think and know it's going to be. After gaining just a little bit more experience points to make sure I wouldn't level up in the middle of the battle, at level 98, I take on Rival 6. I decide to use three agilities against Pidgeot and then make a mistake and use a fourth. Oops. But if we need to use Struggle, that will be fine. Quick Attack then crits, which means the Badge Boost Glitch did nothing there, for attack at least. Whatever. We have 200 HP. Unfortunately, even with the glitches, ooh, crits are nice. It's going to be like a four hit KO versus Rhyhorn and we don't have a lot of power points remaining. Gyarados is pretty scary. It's going to be a three hit KO, even with quick attack, and Hydro Pump did a lot. Rowlith maybe will be a one shot. Not quite, but it knocks itself out with takedown. We can knock out Alakazam with a crit, which was pretty nice, but don't forget, base 91 speed. 
But now all I have is Whirlwind and Venusaur is going to knock me out with Poison. Now, typically in these challenges, I made sure I had a bad matchup. But in this one, you betcha I made sure I faced Venusaur. Totally didn't do the equivalent of flipping a coin to decide no, no. Uh, okay, yes, yes. But because of that, Rival 6 ended up being not so bad. This battle only took four minutes, which typically is an eternity, but in this challenge is quick as heck. Now, I'm not going to set up against Pidgeot anymore. Instead, I set up versus Rhyhorn because Rhyhorn is much worse. Horn Drill and Tail Whip don't really do much, so I'm going to waste all my Whirlwinds here because I'm likely going to need to rely on Struggle, unfortunately. It'd be nice if we didn't have to with crits like that, but we can't overly rely on crits. And as you're going to see, we didn't need too, too many. We didn't get a crit versus Gyarados. We don't need a crit versus Growlithe because of Tail Whip, although we got one. Technically, we need one versus Alakazam, but we get the Retroactive Potion. And now I have to decide, I forgot to use my final two agilities, so that really sucks. That means Venusaur is going to have two extra opportunities to use Razor Leaf, but even critting, it doesn't do enough. The third one misses, but even if it hit, we had enough HP. And Rival 6 was defeated fairly easily. But now we're at level 98. We don't have a lot of leeway, and we have the Elite Four. It is very unlikely Struggle is going to work, at least not on its own. If we use Struggle, we're going to have to transform first, and we're almost definitely going to have to transform and use Struggle for most of these battles. The only one I'm thinking we might not, actually maybe Bruno as well and Agatha. But the biggest problem with this run is the first Pokemon problem. The first Pokemon is usually a weak Pokemon to get you ready, and then you start to see the more difficult Pokemon. Because of that, we're going to have some really, really terrible moves, and I'm really, really not looking forward to this. But aside from getting some extra money, I have 18,000 experience points. There's a rare candy. So if we want to get to level 100, we have it. I have maxed out my stat experience because I calculated my DVs. I can look at my stats. So they're all, in the case of HP and attack, the best they can possibly be. I'm a perfect ditto. I can either do this or I'm going to fail and this is going to be another do not finish. I'm thinking this is going to happen, but I'm prepared for the possibility it won't. Either way, this is a good opportunity to thank you guys so, so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I don't often ask for subs, and when I do, you guys actually come through big time, which is why I'm doing it now. But yeah, it really helps out the channel, boosts it in the algorithm, and allows more people to see someone insanely stubborn, wasting hours, I mean, spending happily, hours of their lives playing a game that came out when they were, well, I mean, I got my first Pokemon Blue when I was seven, but like, I don't even know if I was in kindergarten when these games originally came out. But anyway, that's enough preamble. Here's the battle with Loralee. Now, I'm going to try the struggle strategy first because I'm not going to have another opportunity to waste all my power points. So if I go to the Pokemon Center and heal and have 10 transform power points, I won't be able to use struggle for the rest of the run. So I really want to make sure it's not a viable option. And shockingly, it's not a viable option. Even if I get to level 100, we're nowhere close. So we're going to have to transform into Dugong, which really, really, really sucks. So Dugong is only level 54 versus me, who's at level 99, and its moves really stink. It gets takedown, which can miss and deals recoil damage. And although crits are nice, crits are great, it doesn't get surf, it gets Aurora Beam. This would be a lot easier in yellow version, I think, but maybe that's for another video. Aurora Beam, if it crits, does a lot, but I have to use all five power points of rest. Growl is pathetic. I don't need it. It really doesn't help me much. And it's really annoying to knock out these Pokemon because after Loralee's Dugong, which will prefer Growl and Rest because those aren't resisted by me, with my attack lowered, I do next to nothing. And it's just going to make this battle absurdly tedious. We are going to need to rely on 13% chances for critical hits here. And we're going to need at least three of them. And this is going to take an incredibly, incredibly long time. And 
while we do eventually get our second critical hit versus Jinx, we had lost so much HP that when we resort to struggle because we also ran out of power points, we knock ourselves out. So this battle looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. So at this point, I've done about 50 attempts versus Laura Lee. I'm at level 100. Let me tell you what I figured out. First of all, if I get hit with Growl, instant reset. Second of all, we want to crit really quickly, gets rid of Dugong. Dugong's really scary. Now, we're going to have to waste all our power points versus Cloyster because it can't do all that much to me. We want to hit it with Growl. Remember when I said Growl was useless? I was wrong. Turns out, I didn't realize that lowering Cloyster's attack essentially makes it a great, great way to just use our power points safely and not have to worry about Slowbro, which also has Growl, and Jinx, which has Body Slam and can paralyze us. So, hooray. Anyway, it takes a long time because Cloyster likes to confuse us, and we can use Rest to restore our HP, which is pretty good. Now, Aurora Beam, after that Growl, it's going to do decent damage, but once you get hit by Growl, it means that critical hits are necessary, and 13% odds aren't great. We need at least three of them, so it appears. And while we get one fairly quickly against Slowbro, we don't seem to get one so quickly against Jinx. And Jinx's Thrash does quite a bit. And once we get the critical hit, we've lost enough HP that we're below 100, and I don't know if we have enough to knock out Lapras. We get that third critical hit right away, and I was so excited for all 0.1 seconds until I saw that Lapras came nowhere close to fainting, and I only had 18 HP left which means the luck factor in this battle just went up by a factor of I don't know what, but I now need four critical hits or no growls or more power points. How am I going to do this? Easy. Just get absurdly good luck. We get it right off the bat. First turn critical hit. Pretty good. Now we go for Aurora Beam. I decide not to go for growl so quickly and actually try to knock out Cloyster. Unfortunately, Takedown can miss, which is frustrating. But you can see my strategy has changed to knock out Cloyster quickly, while before, my strategy was to set up versus Cloyster. Slowbro is terrible to set up against because it knows Growl, so we want to knock it out quickly, and we do. And that means we can use Growl versus Jinx. Remember how much Thrash did to me before? Well, now it's not going to after Growl, and Jinx is actually going to damage itself. In fact, if I didn't use Growl, it would have damaged itself even more. But Jinx is, in fact, the weak Pokemon we can set up against. Not Cloyster, not Slowbro, Jinx. We don't want to waste all our Growls because Lapras is also very scary. With three Growls, however, and some Rests, not all that scary. Because even though we're confused, even though we're paralyzed, we can heal ourselves. And now we only need, I don't even know if we need critical hits, to be honest with you. It's going to take a while to use up all our rests. But yeah, we definitely need critical hits. That struggle's not doing very much. But we only need one if we do enough chip damage. Unfortunately, getting paralyzed and confused can happen. It looks like we're going to lose. And then bam, the crit. Honestly, I don't think the luck in that battle at the end was absurd. The beginning luck, however, was pretty insane. And for that reason, I'm gonna save. But j -Rose, you're not supposed to save. This is the red and blue challenge. But audience member, are you kidding me? Typically, these challenges aren't about relying on luck and we're totally just relying on luck. Uh, you want me to admit it? This is all luck. There's perseverance, there's some strategy. Like, I'm not in every battle just saying, oh, just roll the dice. But that battle, yeah, I didn't have any other options. What, what else could I have done? I came up with the best strategy to give myself the best odds. But at the end of the day, it was still lucky whether I got the right things to happen. The strategy just ensured that when bad things happened, I was prepared. And that Lapras section showed you the three growls made a huge, huge difference due to Parafusion. But if you don't like lucky battles, good news. Bruno is really, really easy. So, I'm actually going to try the struggle strategy just to see if it worked, and the answer is unfortunately no. It's not going to work, but I had a feeling Transform would work pretty well. We can use Harden five times, 
and then just use Rage, and the battle's gonna take forever, but even if they get critical hits, look how much Rage does, by the way. It does a ton. And we're gonna slowly knock out everything. The only scary Pokemon would be a critical hit from Submission, and Bruno does not have good AI. So unlike Giovanni, he's just gonna attack completely randomly. We do get hit with Submission, but it wasn't a crit. I called Rage the worst move in Pokemon history, and I sort of stand by that. But in this instance, it was pretty good. First try victory. <laughs> Bruno is always bad. The next Elite Four member is actually probably not going to be so bad either in Agatha. We can use Hypnosis and Dream Eater against her. It's just going to be a speed tie in the beginning, so we might have to do this two or three times. But I actually foresee Agatha being not so bad. So we transform, we get confused. That's probably worst case scenario. We put Golbat to sleep and it stays asleep. We use Dream Eater. That's one down, not bad. We miss with Hypnosis once. Unfortunately, her Gengar hits with Hypnosis and then does exactly what I was planning to do. It's not the end of the world unless we hit and then it wakes up and then we run out of Hypnosis. So we're out of it by the time we knock out Haunter, but Nightshade's gonna deal 100 HP of damage. So that's actually really good. Of course, Gengar is going to confuse me again, then hit me with Nightshade, giving me only 120 HP. I try to confuse Arbok, but it goes for Glare. We will be able to knock it out, but now Gengar is going to need to hit itself in confusion. Agatha's Gengar, that is, because I only have one Nightshade left, and unfortunately, I never am able to use it. So we get some pretty bad luck there, but this shouldn't take too many attempts. This is the very next attempt, as you can tell by the fact there was no cut. We are going to use Hypnosis. I don't know why she swaps. That's actually pretty good. One down. Please hit. Actually, going for Nightshade just seems safer. There we go. Two down. I'm going to go Hypnosis. It stays asleep. Dream Eater, very good. Three down. Arbok. Ah, Glare again. That sucks. But we put it to sleep in Dream Eater. That's three down. And now, should I just go for Nightshade? Ah, I'll go for Hypnosis. Oh, we're out of them anyway. And now we hit ourselves in confusion. Don't forget, we got hit with Screech. And then we get a Gen 1 miss. Great. 1 in 256 chance. I was talking about that earlier. If Koga had used Explosion and missed inexplicably, that's why Gen 1 so great. But we win pretty easily. And for the record, it is because of Agatha, we couldn't use the Struggle strategy the whole way through. Since, again, Struggle is a normal move. By Agatha, even if we were to use Struggle versus both Loralee and Bruno, we would have to use an Aether to restore transform power points for Agatha. The only other option would be to have three power points and then run out after Agatha and then use Struggle versus Lance. But I have a feeling going forward, Struggle is no longer going to be viable. We're going to have to transform, but Lance gives us a really cool Pokemon to transform into his level 58 Gyarados. Unfortunately, it hits me with Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam does have a 10% chance to miss, and of course, I do miss. And it doesn't knock out Lance's Gyarados in one hit. That was an absurdly unlucky battle, and a battle with just bad properties. If you knock out a Pokemon with Hyper Beam in Generation 1, you don't have to recharge. So we're going to exploit that, but we're going to have to weaken Gyarados first. Okay, we get hit with Hyper Beam, but I can go Dragon Rage Hyper Beam another miss. I'm just going to reset. Again, typically, I wouldn't be doing this because, yes, I'm just trying to get good luck, but, like, give me a break. Give me a break. It goes for Leer, and that badge boost might be enough for Hyper Beam to one-shot, and indeed it is. And now Hyper Beam will one-shot the next two Dragonair, and Hydro Pump, it won't outspeed. Unfortunately, we're hit by Hyper Beam with a defense drop, but we still have over half HP, and Hydro Pump is more than good enough to knock out Aerodactyl. Now, I'm hoping it'll knock out Dragonite, but I'm wrong. And that's really unfortunate. Now, there's pretty much no chance for a victory here. I can try to go for Leer, but yeah. Unless I'd gotten a crit, we need to weaken Dragonite first. So, Leer, we can go for Hyper Beam. Or Dragon Rage. Let's see what happens. So it goes for Dragon Rage. That means we do. Leer misses. Hyper Beam hits. That's perfect. We don't miss versus Dragonair. That's two down. We don't miss versus the next Dragonair. That's three down. Takedown does miss. And that's four down. 
we go for Dragon Rage after Agility. Hyper Beam doesn't crit. Mine actually does crit. And so, with the exception of Lee, we've done pretty good. I mean, Bruno was a first try victory, Agatha a second try victory, and what, Lance was a third or fourth try victory? Pretty good. We had more battles versus Laura Lee than the other three combined, but the champion is typically the toughest of the bunch. We're going to be Pidgeot, and Pidgeot does get Sky Attack, but it takes a turn to charge. It no longer has agility, but it does have Mirror Move that might allow me to do some pretty crazy stuff. I'm excited for this battle. I don't know if this is going to be a win or a loss, but I'm at level 100. There's nothing else I can do. I have to just keep battling until I win. Or this is going to be another did not finish. Let's hope that's not the case. Alrighty, so I've already prepared you for this. Pidgeot, ditto, we transform. Animations are on, it goes for Whirlwind. That's perfect. Okay, so now we got to decide what we're going to do. It goes for Mirror Move and transforms into me, transformed into it. Confusing, I think that would fail nowadays. I go for Sky Attack, it's a speed tie, and it also goes for Sky Attack, which is great. That means we're going to hit before it hits and we knock it out, one down. Next is Alakazam, it goes for Reflect, which is brutal, but we get a clutch as heck, critical hit. That's two down. Now, I don't know what to do versus Rhydon. I go for Sky Attack, and it goes for Horn Drill. I could mirror move that. Ah, uh, you know what? It just went for Fury Attack. Leer, that's not bad. It's gonna raise my attack a little bit, although it's gonna lower my defense, making Fury Attack do a ton. I can then mirror move Fury Attack, and that's actually what I wanted, mirror moving Horn Drill. I'm going to try to use mirror move because I don't want to run out of Sky Attack or Wing Attack, and we get another Mega Clutch critical hit and a four-turn Fury Attack. That was massive. We knock out Rhydon. I'm going to go for Sky Attack versus Gyarados. It goes for Dragon Rage, and Sky Attack does a ton, not enough to knock it out, but another Dragon Rage followed by Wing Attack, and shockingly, there's only two Pokemon left, and we have two Sky Attacks left. I go for Sky Attack, it goes for Leer, and that badge boost may have mattered, and I think we just won. I think we just won! Holy moly, I think we just won! I went for Wing Attack because I was hoping I'd crit, but we just won! Let's go! <laughs> awesome! All right, well... This is going to be difficult to put on the tier list. <laughs> Ditto's an interesting Pokemon. It's fun to use. There's so many glitches, but man, does it take a really long time because of having to use up all your moves, having to use struggle. This took more time than like probably the last five fully evolved runs combined, maybe the last 10, but Ditto is going to find itself in its own special ditto tier at the very bottom of the tier list. Even though I didn't know about his video when I was making my Magic Art video, shout outs to Picasprey for being one of the first people to ever do a solo run. A lot of people seemed to think I was ripping him off when in reality, I just really wanted to play the game with Magic Art, and I used items, it wasn't like this. Definitely the standard being no items in battle, although a lot of people attribute it to me now. Madrybred and Picasprey were the two that I saw that use that in their run. So big shout out to them. I don't think he's ever done it in yellow version. So if you want to see me try this in yellow version, might have to wait a year or so, but we'll see. We'll see. I haven't played yellow in a really long time, but thank you guys so much for watching. I have so many videos to make, so I'm going to get back to it. Take care, everyone.